Hi, I'm Lara from Five Out of Four Patterns and welcome to Sewing School. Today we're making a tote and not just any tote. We're making a bunny ear tote that looks just like this. How cute is that? Um, this tote is sturdy enough to stand up on its own, so it's perfect for, say, an Easter basket or something like that, but also how cute is this just for carrying? I love it. You can make this tote with the ears, with the pocket, or without the ears, without the pocket, and you can use different types of interfacing to get different looks. For example, I made this awesome tote. How cute is this? And I didn't use the same interfacing, but, but it is the exact same pattern. So you have two super adorable uh, totes that can be, you know, this will be for my four-year-old, this will be my, for my 13-year-old, and everybody's happy. There are even two different cut lines for, for these totes. You can do the tall version or you can do a shorter version. It's totally up to you, which makes this a fun, versatile, year-round pattern. So let's get started. So I have in front of me my supplies. Now you can find all these pattern pieces at 5 out of 4com I will link the post um, and the pattern pieces below so that you can get your hands on them. But you can see I've got a lot of things going on here. I've got my mains and my linings, and there are two of each. So two of the main, two of the lining, plus I've got some, this is headliner, but you can use Flex Foam by Pellon. I actually uh, recommend that because it's fusible and it makes it a lot easier to work with. But you have that. If you are not conserving your interfacing, you could also um, use some SF 101 to interface your lining pieces. I also have our pocket pieces. There are two of those, plus some SF 101 for both of those those. I've got our ear pieces. You have a mane and you have a lining or whichever, whatever you want the inside of the ear to look like and the outside to look like. So you have two of each of those. I used SF 101 on um, basically everything except for the foam. Uh, and you can use SF 101, of course. It's lovely and wonderful. It's my favorite. But you can use just about any lightweight interfacing and I do encourage using interfacing. So we have four of those pieces. Additionally, uh, we have a separate cut piece. These are our strap pieces. They are four inches by 22 inches long and there are two of those and there's also interfacing to go on those. Now, I want let's talk about interfacing. I always get the question, do I have to use interfacing on this pattern? Um, and the answer is, I guess, no, you don't have to, but it's going to impact the, the structure of your bag. Let me show you an example. As you can see, it's pretty stiff. The, um, the ears stand up. It, it stands up on its own. Like I don't have to do anything to make this stand up on its own. I used Pellon Flex Foam. It is fusible uh, and I use that on the main. Now I didn't use any interfacing on the lining yet. As you can see, it still stands up just fine. So if I had used interfacing on the lining, it would have just even more um, reinforced the sturdiness of this bag. I like bags that stand up, especially a bag like this that I'm going to give to one of my kids. It's perfect to just put things inside of and it stays where you put it. All right, now let's look at the other one. So this is the same pattern, obviously. I just don't have the ears or the pocket on it. Now, if I sit it down, you can see that it does stand up on its own. It's great. Well, let's talk about the fabric I used. This outer fabric, the main fabric, is a home decor style fabric. It's more canvassy uh, type of fabric. Um, and so it's already pretty sturdy. I did not interface the main. However, the lining I did. I used SF 101 on the lining itself, which gave it some sturdiness. And so it does sit up on its own, but not in the same way that this does. So if you're using quilting cotton, as I am here, and you choose not to use any interfacing on that quilting cotton, cotton what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a bag that you sit down and immediately crumples because it has nothing to give it structure, to give it strength. So that's why it's important to use to use interfacing. Now, if you don't want a bag that stands up or that looks like this and you don't mind that it crumples or you just want a simple tote, that's totally up to you. Um, by all means, you do what you need to do and what you want to do for your purposes. But for the purposes of this bag, um, it's very important that we use some sort of stabilizer. Now, I've got a very stiff stabilizer here and a not so stiff, stiff stabilizer here, but they both look pretty excellent. They both serve different purposes. This is great for my 13-year-old 
she could even use it as a purse if she wanted, uh, but it'll be great for her books and her makeup and things like that. This is perfect for all my, my kids' toys and you know Easter candy and whatever. This is perfect. I love the stability that this, that this gives. You could even do it without the strap. You've got like a little bucket here. If you do the shorter version, it makes it a little more baskety. So that's my whole spiel. But if you want something that's sturdy for a basket, I suggest using interfacing. All right, that's that, that's interfacing. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to adhere all of my um, interfacing to my pattern pieces. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I've got all my interfacing attached. I want to talk to you briefly about this uh, flex foam or headliner that I've used. I highly, highly, highly recommend the Pellon um, flex foam, the fusible kind. It makes life so much easier. This is headliner that I got at Joann Fabrics and it works just fine, but the fusible makes life so much easier. So if you have the fusible on hand, here's what I suggest. When you're you're cutting it out, cut it out a half an inch smaller than the entire pattern piece for both of them. And so when you fuse it on, you will have a half inch um, bit that's just fabric and not interfacing. What that does is that uh, lessens the bulk in your seams and just makes things lay a whole lot better. But since I had to sew mine on, I had to keep it the, um, the size of, of my actual pattern piece. It just makes it easier when I'm sewing. So that's my little blurb on that. Are we ready to get started? I know I am. I'm gonna go get my tutorial and I'll be right back. We're ready to get started. I've got my tutorial and I'm ready to get things moving. It's very exciting. So we're gonna start with the ears. We are going to take um, the main color and the contrast color and we're going to place the contrast right sides together with our main. Now once we've done that, I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around this earpiece, but I'm going to leave a two inch opening on the side so that I can turn it right side out. Let's do that. Okay, here we are. You can see that I've got an opening here on both of them. I used a one quarter inch seam allowance to go all the way around. Now I'm going to clip the corners getting as close to the stitch line as possible without going through it. Okay, clip the, clip the corners on all of them. That includes the tip as well, the point. Okay, now if you feel like you wanna trim the um, seam allowance some, by all means do that. Just don't trim the seam allowance at the opening. Once you've done that, let's turn these right side out. So we're going to be pushing all these corners out. Um, get something pointy, be gentle, but push, push those points out, those corners. Okay, now that we've turned them right side out, it's time to press them a little bit. Your, um, when you hold this up, the opening is going to want to automatically move to the inside that quarter of an inch. So turn it to the inside a quarter of an inch and give it a good press. All right, so here we are. We can see what we've got here all pressed and ready to go. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to top stitch all the way around because we need to close this opening, right? So we're gonna top stitch. We're gonna lengthen our stitch just a little bit and, um, and then I'm gonna top a stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way around. So here we are, we have top stitched. Now we have to decide which, which color is going to be the inside of the ear. So I'm choosing pink because I like the pink to be the inside of the ear. So what it says for step number four is this. Fold each ear in half hot dog style with the contrast or the inside of the ear, right sides together. And then pin at the bottom. So this is the bottom of the ear. So we're gonna pin at the bottom. Okay, and we're gonna do that with both. 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we are gonna to go to our sewing machine and with a, a half inch seam allowance, so a half inch from either side, okay, this is about one inch right here, we are going to stitch from the bottom of the ear ab up about one inch. I'm gonna okay, so here we are, we've got it um, stitched um, about an inch up and we're gonna open it up. Let me trim off my threads here. Okay, so we're gonna open it up and then we're going to push this down. So grab something pointy, um, scissors or even a seam ripper and push that apart. So your goal is to push that down just like a box pleat. So you have the same amount of fabric on either side of the seam. So it's a little bulky, but you're going to push it down just like this and you're gonna give it a good press. And then once you've done that, you're gonna clip it to keep it down even more. So it, it kind of is all sandwiched in there. And so when you look at your, at your ear, it's starting to look more like an ear. All right, let's do that on the other side. The next thing we're going to do once we've clipped this is we are going to go to our sewing machine and we're gonna stitch across the bottom, like stitch in the ditch, which means to stitch in the stitch line that is already present there. So you're not doing uh, making another stitch line. All right, here we have our ears. You can see we've got our little box pleat stitched down and our ears are looking like really cute, adorable ears. We've got our inside of the ears, which is the is part that we'll be showing, and we've got the outside of the ears. Now let's set those to the side and move on. Let's pull our main panel out. If you haven't already done so, transfer the markings for the bunny ear placements and the straps on both your main, your front main piece and just the straps on your back main piece. So you're going to have on the other side of this, you're not going to do the bunny ears because there's only bunny ears on one side. Using wash away wonder tape or pins, you can use those too. Wash away wonder tape tends to uh, work a whole lot better if you've got it. I highly suggest you use it. You're going to put some wash away wonder tape on the back side of our ears just at the bottom okay and because we've got our our markings already on here we're going to center that on the marking center our ear on the marking okay and I'm gonna grab another pin because I just want to secure the top part of my bunny ear just like this. Okay, and do that with the other bunny ear as well. Now that we've done that, we are going to move to our machine and we're going to again stitch across the bottom of our bunny ear. Okay, let's take our pins out. And as you can see, now we have our bunny ears all attached to our main fabric. And so if you lift it up, you can see our bunny ears, they want to stand up, don't they? You can, um, if yours are too floppy, so you might want to lean down, it'll get better once I get the bag together. If you um, didn't use um, interfacing and yours are super floppy, you can tack them to your, um, to your main piece. And it's time to move on to the strap. So let's get rid of any of, any of our excess threads and let's move that main panel to the side. Okay, now we have our two strap pieces. Both of them have interfacing. We're gonna do one at a time. So, let's start by giving the outside a good press. We want it to look nice and smooth. All right, let's make our strap. Let's turn it over so the wrong side is facing up. We are going to match the long sides, the long raw edges, hot dog style, and we are going to press. We are creating a crease the center of the um, strap piece itself and we want to have that as a guide. So once you've got that all pressed down, you're going to open it back up. Okay, and now you can see you've got a lovely center crease here. Now we're going to take the bottom, or you can start with the top, but I always start, start with the bottom, and you're going to fold that raw edge up to that center crease that we just made, okay? And then we're going to press again. All right, now that we've done that, let's do the top piece. The exact same thing, up. Okay, now fold them both down, and then you're gonna fold them together. So your raw edges are completely encased, these long raw edges, and you're just going to fold them using that guide again, and make sure they're all lined up. Okay, 
Now we're going to repeat that on the other strap piece. Okay, now we have both of our straps and we are going to take them and we are going to sew down both sides, top stitch, um, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So down this side, the long, both long sides. So down this side and down this side. And we'll do that on both of the straps. So. Okay, here we are. Here's our lovely, lovely straps. They're so pretty. Give them another good press and cut off any excess um, threads that you may have. And let's get ready for the next step. Let's set our straps to the side. And now it's time for step four of the straps and we're going to take our main panel, the one with the ears, and we are going to pin the ears out of the way. So just fold them down a little bit, grab a pin, and just pin them out of the way. Okay, now the next part is pretty easy. We're gonna take one strap and we are going to line it up with our strap markings that we previously marked. I'm just gonna put, them, put it right in the center of those two marks. And then we're going to clip, okay? Then we're going to take it. Okay, you wanna make sure you don't do it different on either side so it twists, so make sure that it, you're using the same side of the, uh, of the strap. And clip that down, all right? Let's grab the other main panel. And let's do the same thing. You can see I've already marked where my strap goes, so grab my other strap. Now, let's head over to our sewing machine and let's sew across at a one quarter inch seam allowance um, across each of these straps on both main panels. Here we are, we've got both of our handles here. We can now unpin our um, ears. And we've got Look how cute, oh my goodness. All right, so that's done. All right, let's move our main panels out of the way. We'll come back to those in just one second. It's time to work on our outer pocket. Let's grab our pieces. And this is pretty simple. We're gonna take our outer pocket and we're going to put them right sides together. Okay, then we're going to clip across the top and we're gonna sew across the top. Now this is at a half an inch seam allowance. You're going to stitch right across the top. That's it. Okay, we can see that we've got our pocket stitched together. Now let's open it up. Okay, we're gonna open up the seam. We're gonna press it open. Now let's turn it over and press it on the right side. If you notice, I'm pulling a bit on my, on my left side here um, so that I can make sure that there are no folds there in that seam, that it's pulled apart, just so. I'm gonna take it and we're gonna fold it. And that seam should be at the top here. Okay, so you can see we've got the seam right at the top. Now we're gonna go to our sewing machine, lengthen our stitch just a tad, and we are going to top stitch across this pocket. We have our top stitch across there. Let's give it another press. Okay, let's pull out our main piece with the ears. All right, now we're going to um, attach our pocket. So we're just gonna line up the bottom and the side seams and you can see how it just covers some of our um, ear and it looks super cute. And we're going to clip or pin all the way around here. Okay. Now, with a one quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to attach the pocket to the main panel. And we're going to stitch down the side and around here and across the bottom and up and over and back up the side. How cute is it? Oh my goodness, I just love it so much. It's so pretty. All these lovely spring fun colors, I love it. Now let's put our bag together. We're going to grab this one and the other main panel and we're going to put them right sides together. Now, let's clip them together a little bit and then we're going to sew. Okay, now it's time to sew. We're gonna sew down this side and then we're gonna sew down this side and then we're gonna sew at the bottom. Do not sew these, all right? Those are gonna box our corners and we need those to stay open. 
Okay, here we are. We've done exactly the same thing that we did on the main panels we also did with the lining. Let me, let me give you a little tip when it comes to the lining. One of the things that I love about making bags is when I get the lining that fits perfectly snug inside the main panels. So one way to ensure that is to start at a half an inch, which is what our seam allowance is on the main panel, at the upper edge, start at half an inch, and then gradually um, move your seam allowance out to about five eighths inch. That just allows for a little more snugness when it comes to the lining. The next thing we're going to do is trim our seam allowances. It's time to box our corners. Yay, we're moving right along. So let's um, pick up our bag and let's open it up and we're gonna match the side seams here, and we're gonna lay it down. And you can see what that does. It opens up these little corners that we cut out. So you're gonna put your fingers inside like this, and you're gonna open it up, and you're going to match those, uh, the side seam to the bottom seam, and you're gonna nest the seam allowance. Let's see. Nesting the seam allowance, it just means that one of the seam allowances will point one way, and the other seam allowance will point the other way. So if my, if the seam allowance that's facing me, that's on the top here, is pointing to the right, the seam allowance underneath is going to point to the left. And then I'm gonna just, I'm gonna nest them right in there, snug up against one another. And you can see how they go. One goes to the right, one goes to the left. Once you have them nested there, go ahead and clip them in place and then match up the rest of the raw edge here. And give it a good clip. And we're gonna repeat that on the other side. So flip your bag over. Let's repeat that on the main. All right, so you can see what we've got here. It's gonna box the corners, it's gonna be very cute. Now we're going to take both the main and the lining to our sewing machine, and we are going to stitch with a half inch seam allowance across this one, across this one, across this one, and across this one. Okay, so here we are. If we unfold, you can see we've got our boxed corners here. But what I wanna do real quick is I wanna trim these seam allowances again. It's time to attach the lining to our main. So we're going to turn the main right side out. Okay, so here we've got, we've got our bag pre-lining, looking pretty cute, very happy with it. Now, um, go ahead and uh, tuck your ears into the pocket. Also tuck the strap into the pocket and you'll want to make sure this strap is down like this. All right, so we're going to place this, the main part, the main bag inside of the lining. So do not turn the lining right side out. It remains wrong side up. Now make sure that your strap is tucked inside and laying flat against the main. All right, the big thing here is to match the side seams. So just, Pull it around, match that side seam. And now let's match the other side seam. Now you're going to put your hands inside and you're going to pull it taut. And you're going to place one clip or pin at this strap right here and then over here at the other strap. Do not put a pin or clip here. Turn it around. And one more clip on this strap. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got everything pinned together or clipped together. Um, this side, this side here that I have three clips on, this is the side, the main side with the pocket and the ears. All right, and this is the back of the bag. So I've purposely told you not to put a clip right here because we have to leave an opening when we sew. So this opening helps to do, well, it helps to birth our bag. That's what it's called. So it's helped, it helps to turn the, um, 
bag inside out. If you just sewed all the way around it with your machine, then you wouldn't be able to turn your bag right side out and this is what your bag would look like. So we have to keep an opening at the top here. So I have left this open without a clip, just as a reminder, keep that open. And I chose to keep it open on the back side of the bag so the front side with the bunny ears looks perfectly clean. So you're gonna go to your sewing machine and you're gonna sew from this clip all the way around and you're gonna stop at this clip, keeping an opening here to uh, pull your bag right side out. Here we are, it's time to trim our seam allowance, but there's a little trick to it. We are not gonna trim the seam allowance where the opening is, obviously, because we need that to be able to turn in the half an inch. And we're also not going to trim down the um, straps at all, so we'll do it like this. So here's, feel for a strap, here's a strap, and then we'll trim here around. So there's a strap right there. I'm not trimming the straps at all. The reason I don't trim the straps is because I find that when I trim them, they become a little weak. And so I've had uh, straps fall apart on me and I do not want to do that, or I do not want that to happen. So I do not trim those. Additionally, when I'm sewing around this bag, when I get to one of the straps to sew over the straps, I backstitch multiple times. So, um, so as to kind of, you know, make it even stronger. Okay, so we have, we have trimmed our seam allowance. It's now time to turn our bag right side out. So reach into your opening and just start pulling that bag. shake. Now let's push the lining inside the bag. You want to push those corners out. Push the lining down in there. Both sides. Okay, it's time to do some pressing. So bring your, bring your straps this way so that, that pulls that seam allowance to the side you want it to be. And the goal here is to have your lining hidden. I don't want the lining to show. So you wanna push that lining down in there and then give it a press. If you need to clip it to keep that lining for, or pin it to keep it from kind of peeking up, then go ahead and do that. Don't be, don't, don't fret if it shows a little bit, not a problem. You just don't want it sticking out like this. This is not what you want. When you get to your opening, again, just like with the bunny ears, this is going to want to fold in um, the half an inch anyway, so it's perfect. Um, you just wanna give it, get it cleaned up and give it another press and clip it into place. Pull that strap up. Pull that lining down and press it. You can even clip by your, by your strap if you need to. Okay, we know we're gonna need to press over here because we've got a lot of lining showing. bag is almost done. The only thing we have left to do is to top stitch. We are going to top stitch about an eighth an inch from the top. So lengthen your stitch just slightly and you're going to top stitch all the way around. Making sure when you put your machine, your um, bag into your machine that you put these through too. You don't want these the, the straps to do this because then it looks like that and that's not what you want. So make sure that goes inside of your machine so that you can go cleanly around, okay? So I'm going to top stitch and I will be right back. Okay, so here we are. Let's pull our bunny ears out and let's take a look at our finished product. Now, one of the most important things in bag making is to really Get your lining pushed down and to press the bag. Now, it looks cute as is, but every bag should have a final press inside and out. So, and if your iron like mine is small enough, I can actually get all the way down into the bottom with it. So that is the lining. Now let's press the outside. 
Now again, um, we're talking about interfacing here. Notice that my um, bunny ears want to stick out a little bit, but that is okay. They're super stinking cute. Um, I can either leave them as is or I can tack them down so they sit um, up against the um, mane a little bit more. I kind of like the way they sit out like this. These are just so cute. I love them so much. I cannot wait to give them to my children for Easter. They are going to be so happy. Now we have two sizes in this bag. We have the regular tall size, which is what these are, and we have a shorter size so that you can make a more, a shorter type bag or basket. So this is a really versatile pattern. I highly recommend it. Um, I very highly, highly recommend the Pellon um, Fusible Flex Foam. I love working with it. The headliner did fine. Um, just not as well as the flex foam which I find to be fantastic so but does it get any cuter than these bags I mean seriously they're just the cutest thank you for joining me today for sewing school um, I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed making a bag right along with me and if you have any questions definitely let us know I am going to post all of the information about this pattern in the description box below so that you can make your very own I hope that you will subscribe and join us for all the other fun things that we um, are going to make and uh, yeah I will see you next time on Sewing School. Bye.